Hi everyone, my name is Isabel Tingzon. I am a machine learning researcher at Thinking Machines Data Science. And today I'll be presenting our work on informal settlement detection using machine learning and time series satellite images with a particular application in the Venezuelan migration crisis. This project is a collaborative effort between Thinking Machines, the humanitarian organization IMAP Colombia, and the data and analytics platform Premise Data. Since 2014, nearly 2 million Venezuelans have fled to Colombia to escape an economically devastated country during what is one of the largest humanitarian crises in Latin America's recent history. Many of these migrants struggle to survive as they face extreme poverty, poor living conditions, unemployment, food insecurity, and health problems, exacerbated further by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. With thousands emigrating each day, non-government organizations and local government units face the challenge of having to quickly identify, assess, and monitor rapidly growing migrant communities in order to provide urgent humanitarian assistance. However, with many of these populations displaced in informal settlement areas across the country, locating vulnerable population over large territories can be very difficult without more innovative solutions. In recent years, several research works have turned to using computer vision and satellite images to quickly and efficiently identify informal settlements in other vulnerable communities. Indeed, the emergence of new settlements is very visible using historical high-resolution satellite images, as you can see here. Specifically, observe the emergence of an informal migrant settlement between year, the years 2017 and 2019. Unfortunately, the high costs associated with acquiring high-resolution images coupled with compute-intensive deep learning approaches can be a barrier to adoption for many humanitarian organizations with limited resources. In this work, we aim to address this problem by presenting a novel approach to mapping new and emerging informal settlements using cost-efficient machine learning methods and publicly accessible, low-resolution, time-series satellite images. We then demonstrate the effectiveness of the approach in identifying potential informal migrant settlements in Colombia that have emerged recently, specifically between the years 2015 and 2020. Our ultimate goal is to, is to accelerate the process of detection of new settlements, allowing a rapid response to the changing needs of the, of the refugee and migrant populations. We hope to increase the visibility of the Venezuelan migrant population so that NGOs, state entities, and local government units can offer faster, more efficient, and more effective assistance. We start by collecting low-resolution Sentinel-2A images, which are generally free and publicly accessible through Google Earth Engine. Specifically, we generated a single composite for each of the year ranges, um, as you can see here. We do this by calculating the median of all cloudless pixels available within the two years and we sampled each band to the highest ge geometric resolution of 10 meters. Note that biannual composites are preferred over annual composites as they contain less cloud cover per image. For our ground truth, we used field data of informal migrant settlements collected across Colombia by the humanitarian organization IMAP in 2019. The dataset contains a total of 36 ground-validated coordinate locations of informal migrant settlements within these nine municipalities. For each coordinate, we generated a, po a vector polygon uh, enclosing the informal settlement area and projected these onto Sentinel-2A images to obtain 10-meter resolution raster masks. We then extracted historical spectral information at these specific pixels. To form our set of negative examples, we randomly sampled 500 meter by 500 meter uh, grid blocks and examined each selected grid to ensure it contained only formal settlements or unoccupied land masses, as you can see here. We then modeled the problem as a supervised pixel-wise binary classification task. For each pixel, we extracted 12 spectral bands from the Sentinel-2A image, as you can see here. We also derived a number of vegetation and built-up indices, such as the NDVI, 
which quantifies the amount of vegetation cover per area, as well as the NDBI, which highlights um, urban areas. We then use the historical spectral band values and derived indices for each of the three biennial composites from 2015 to 2020 as input features to the model. The output of the model is a probability map that includes higher probability areas as brighter pixels. We compared the performance of machine learning models such as logistic regression, support vector machines, and random forest. For model evaluation, we used a leave one municipality out cross-validation approach. To evaluate model performance, we compute both pixel level and settlement level precision and recall. We define a settlement as a group of pixels whose predicted probabilities can be aggregated to form a settlement level probability. Specifically, we group pixels based on their membership to either an informal settlement polygon or a non-informal settlement grid block and compute the mean of the top 10% pixel probabilities per settlement. The main intuition behind computing settlement level performance is that only a proportion of pixels in the settlement actually need to be positively identified for that entire settlement to be detected. For both pixel level and settlement level results, we compute the precision and recall curves at the top X percent of pixels or settlements. Thus, assuming that human validators begin with the highest probability pixels or settlements first and validate in decreasing pixel brightness, we can compute the precision and recall for any given maximum validation capacity. Here, we present the pixel level precision recall curves and settlement level precision recall curves and find that random forest performs consistently best across a majority of the municipalities. Here, we emphasize the importance of post-classification validation. We do this in two steps. First, through remote validation, followed by on-the-ground validation. With remote validation, basically, once we have the informal settlement probability map, we then inspect, uh, manually inspect, historical high-resolution satellite images in Google Earth Pro based on where the pixels light up. This is so that we further filter out false positives while spending a little more resources in order to catch any false negatives. Of course, as much as possible, we want to avoid missing out on any potential informal migrant settlement. Once potential informal settlements are identified, we then drop vector polygons around candidate areas and share these with our partners, Premise Data. Premise then enables its network of contributors to travel to these locations and determine if these settlements are actual Venezuelan migrant communities. An example of on-the-ground um, on validation process is as follows. So first, a settlement is identified through remote validation, as you can see here. Polygons of the settlements are then ingested into the premise platform. Validation tasks then appear in the premise app. Note that the app also allows users to identify specific needs that the inhabitants of the settlement may have uh, with regards to water and sanitation, health, food security, and overall living conditions. Next, on-the-ground premise contributors take photos of the settlements and conduct surveys through the premise app. And finally, results are visualized through the premise dashboard. To summarize, we have presented an approach to accelerate the detection of potential informal Venezuelan migrant settlements in Colombia using machine learning and time series satellite images. As of this presentation, we have identified over 350 potential migrant settlements through remote validation, 150 of which were sent to Premise for on-the-ground validation. Out of these 150, Premise has been able to validate 70, and so far, no false positives have been reported yet, so all 70 are informal migrant settlements. Note that this is still an ongoing process. Finally, we acknowledge and are thankful to the Office of U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance of USAID for supporting and funding the project. Thank you very much.